Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. Now here's this week's message. Well, how are you tonight? Well, we're starting a new series, so we were in that other one for quite a while, so it's kind of cool to be in a new one, Change Your World. We're going to be talking about how to make a difference with your life. Uh, we, I think that's it's, it's a big part of what we do here at the church, and uh, we're it's kind of going along with our small groups. So if you're in a small group, you know that. If not, it's not too late. You can always get involved in a small group. Uh, so anyway, so let's jump in. You know, I was, I don't know if you know this, but dogs are not often mentioned in the Bible, and there's only one type of dog that is actually mentioned. It's, um, it's right here. It says, there are three things which are majestic in pace, yes, four which are stately and walk, a lion which is my, a, a mighty among the beasts and does not turn away from any, and here it is here, a greyhound. Now, who would have thought a greyhound, right? A greyhound, a male goat also, and a king whose troops are with him. So, I, I, you know, I grew up in Arizona, and in Tucson, we used to, my dad used to take us when we were, uh, uh, when we were kids to greyhound racing. I don't know, have you ever been to greyhound racing? And that's a thing, you know, and I remember it kind of being kind of fun, you know, the, the, the greyhound chases this mechanical rabbit that's on this inside of the track. And so, so anyways, so there's, I was reading uh, that recently about... A couple years ago, there was a greyhound track down in Florida, and the the mechanical rabbit took off the dogs. That's what that's what motivates them. They don't have a jockey. That's they they chase this this rabbit, and uh, the rabbit though malfunctioned. This mechanical rabbit and it and it exploded. Like fur and wires went everywhere. And so the dogs freaked out, you know. So like one dog takes off, gets disoriented, takes off into the barricade and breaks some of his ribs, hurts himself. Uh, a, a, another dog just kind of just starts barking, you know, at the crowd. And then a third, the, the rest of the dogs, I guess, most of them just like lay down. I thought, you know, that, that's kind of a story of life. You know, when people, they, they, they're chasing something. And when, it, when they find out it's empty, you know, it's not real, it's, 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 le- it's a ladder leaning on the, wrong, on the wrong wall, they either hurt themselves, they start yelling at people, or they just lay down and give up, you know, just, and, and, and that's kind of the frustration, and that's why it's so important when we talk about, hey, why are we living, what's, what's, how do we change our world, my, my world that I live in, as well as you know, other people that I impact as well. So it certainly is something we want to, to talk about. If you would take out your outline, I want you to be able to follow along with it. I, I put on the outline, it's not on the TV, but the goal of the message today is to realize it's time for you to live for your purpose, the purpose that God's given you. He wants you to live for that. Okay, so let me <clears throat> look at some verses here. It says, where there is no vision... People will perish. In other words, vision is so important. It's, it's, it's a driving part of us. It's, it's something that it draws the best out of us. It's so important. This is a, that's the King James Version. A different translation is where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. So this idea of vision, of a dream, of revelation. If you look up that word revelation or vision, it's the word kazon. It's actually a guttural sound, kazon. So kazon, which is different than that. That's calzone. Maybe that'll help you think of it, though. Calzone. Next time you're eating a calzone, you can think, hey, man, I got a vision. You know? But kazon, kazon is a dream, a, re- a revelation, a vision, something that draws the best out of us, something that gives us a reason to live, to get up in the morning, to, to go through things that we wouldn't necessarily go through. So it certainly is, 
is very important. And, and part of the reason I get excited about this is because that's a big part of what the vineyard's about. I think that's part of our job is to help align ourselves with you and help you figure out, hey, this is God's dream for my life. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And we've seen that for many, 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 many people over the years. And growth track is a big part of that, trying to help you to figure that out. So now, some of the benefits <clears throat> with uh, finding your, the vision God has for your life is this, it does bring focus into your life. It'll bring focus. You ha- you'll, 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 you'll have more alignment with the things that you're doing in your life. Because all of us certainly need that. Especially because there are other people, other organizations that they have a plan for your life. Did you know that? Did you know McDonald's has a plan for your body? That's true. And the telemarketer has a plan for your finances. And I mean, people have a plan for how you're supposed to live, how you're supposed to spend your money, how you're supposed to do it. And so you, you can easily get pulled over that in, into a, in somebody else's plan for you. It may not be what God has for you. So dis- discovering that, figuring that, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do with my life, gives you incredible focus, which is important and we all need that. Another thing is, is a vision will give you endurance. Because any vision that comes from God is not going to be easy. I mean, he never gives out, hands out easy projects. We choose those on our own. Hey, can I have something easy? God gives big things, things that are challenging, things that cause us to really go to him in prayer and to trust in him and go to his word and pull out some promises that will get us through it. I mean, endurance is is something that we we all need. One of the things that... uh, 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 that I think helps with endurance is having a small vision right in front of me. Hey, I can do this. Uh, a few weeks ago, I went uh, to this uh, one of these races. It's called like the Rugged Maniac. You know, it's these mud races and all. And there was a lot of mud. There was mud. There was, and I've done I've done one before, and it was uh, it was really long. This one I actually like this one because it was only it was only a five k, which is like a little over three miles, and they had twenty five obstacles. Meaning like little like fun things to do. So the minute you did like an obstacle, you could use, sometimes you could see the next one. So you just like run to the next one, you know, and that you just, and, and if you didn't see it, you knew it was right around the corner. And that it kind of, they broke it up. So it's, so it's easier to have, here's, here's a picture of me. This is one of the things I'm doing. See, I got my sunglasses on. I'm looking cool, you know, but you know, just, and, and just, just, uh, doing one event after another, that helps. Listen, when you have a vision and you get it, it helps you to get to the next thing that you're, that it gives you endurance. You can go through it. You can say, hey, I can make this through. And then another thing vision does is it helps bring fulfillment. Fulfillment in our life, which is, which is uh, something that, that God wants you to have. He wants you to have fulfillment. A lot of times people look for fulfillment in things that really don't bring fulfillment, whether it's in uh, you know, entertainment or in, in, uh, in money. Uh, they look for it in fame, in sex, all kinds of things. Now, those things aren't necessarily bad. And there's a whole list of things. But to find fulfillment in that, that's like your end goal. That's, you got to have a bigger vision than that. And so God wants you to have a vision that when, as you start to move towards it, you find, you find real, real fulfillment. Okay? God does have a plan for your life. And here in Ephesians, Ephesians is a great book. I want to look at a couple verses in here because some scholars say it's like the Magna Carta. It's like what it, it, it covers so much. If you were to only, if you like only had, you're on your death board, the deathbed, let's say, and you can only, hey, Andy, I only have t- half an hour. I've never really read the Bible. What book, what, what can I read in a half an hour, right? This is the one thing I'm, it would be Ephesians. I mean, Ephesians is the one that's going to cover it. Certainly, uh, it helps, uh, and it talks a lot about God's vision for your life. Now, notice here, it says, it's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. And so that's what we're going to, if we don't go to Christ, we never find it. We're always looking, we're, and, we, and we're, we end up not discovering it. Part of the overall purpose, he is working out in everything and in everyone. So God is designing that in your, he wants you to discover that. He wants you to figure that out. And a big part of it is, is, is you pursuing God because you can, you can do well in life, but miss God's purpose for you. In 2004, in the Athens, Athens Olympics, 
there was this particular guy uh, I was reading about. His name's Matthew Evans. Matthew Evans. And he was a top rifle competitor. He was, he was the best. He was expected to get the gold. And he, was, he, he had done so well, uh, he, he was going to get the gold. It's, uh, it was, it's in this uh, posi- thing called three-position, 15-meter rifle competition. And he was so far ahead when the, he was going to the final target that all he had to do was hit the target anywhere on the target. And he won. That's how far ahead he was. Anywhere on the target. Now, the way they do well in this particular competition is, is uh, they, they, they're, they're doing all of this activity, but they're able to, when they come to shoot, they're able to um, calm their heart down. They breathe, and they have this technique where they can bring their heart rate way down so that when they shoot, there's no jitters in their, in their hands at all, and it's real smooth, and then they can just shoot real accurate. So, so Matthew Emmons, he's way far ahead, and, uh, and here he is. He's, he's, I mean, it looks like he's got a no, gold medal for sure because he's so good. I mean, all he has to do is hit the target anywhere. And these guys, they just, and that's, that's what he does. So he goes for his last shot, calms his heart down, aims, shoots, bam, bullseye, wrong target. He hit the next guy's target. He wasn't, he didn't realize that. He goes from first place to eighth place, doesn't even meddle. I think that's how people are sometimes in their life. They get a bullseye and they want, they're thinking, hey, look at how great I did, but wrong target. Listen, if you don't hit what God has for you, the vision he has for you, you end up like Matthew Emmons. You're kind of like, well, wait a minute. I, I did great. Yeah, but great on the wrong target is not great. So God wants, has a vision for you. He wants you to discover that. He doesn't want you to miss it. It's important. You, there's a reason that you're here on this planet. And God wants you to discover that. So let's continue in Ephesians. I did want to unpack it a little bit uh, with, with, in Ephesians here. It's in your outline. You can open up your Bibles as well and follow along. So it says, um, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. So he says, hey, there's some things in our life that are not good. They're they're fruitless. They they don't don't produce fruit in our lives. They're not helpful. And he says that that's going to, that he goes, don't entertain that. You know, that's not going to be helpful. And, And then he says, often it's in darkness because... Well, sometimes only we know about it. You know, we kind of keep it under wraps. We know that maybe we're ashamed about it. And we, we know it's not good for us. And so there's a lot of things that we keep in darkness. But the truth is God is in the light. And so he knows. And, he, and, and if you're going to go after God's vision for your life, you've got to be able to wrestle through some of these things that you know are not helpful. They're not good. And, and so he's, but rather expose them. It is, shame, it is shameful even to mention what the disobedience do and secret. It says, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So he's calling us out to this vision. He says, and, and that's really what today's message is, is, you know, God wants to do something in your life, but you got to wake up. You got to step out of the darkness. You got to say, hey, I, wanted, I want what God, what God has for me. He says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, so that certainly is an option to live as an unwise person, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. I highlighted that because God is going to give you opportunities to help you figure out what the vision and the dream and the revelation he has for your life. You go, well, Andy, how do I know it? I don't know. I can't read God's mind. I don't know what he has for me. Well, listen, he's going to give you opportunities. You will get them. And then you have to make a decision. Am I going to step forward? Am I going to step through that, that door when that door is open? And, and, you're, and you're looking for opportunities. He will give them to you because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, 
which leads to debauchery, instead be filled with the Spirit. Now, what he's talking about here is just that you get, all of us have a choice to live by the flesh or to live by the Spirit, to live by the senses. That word debauchery means basically being controlled by your senses. You're, you're letting your senses make the, the important decisions in your life, how you feel, what you, what, you know, those kinds of things, as opposed to, uh, and then he says, you know, be careful not to get drunk. But that would, you know, I mean, he would also say, if you, you know, he'd say, you know, don't get stoned. Don't get wasted. Don't get blitzed. Don't get, you know, I mean, anything really. And, and you know, maybe alcohol is not even your thing. It might be something else. We, most of us have a vice we go to that indulges our senses. And he says, hey, be careful about that because that can cause you to depend on that. You end up missing what God has for you. And so instead, he says, be filled with the Spirit. Lean into what God has for you. And, uh, and, and that's really... Here's the thing. God's dream, God's vision for your life is hiding behind the things that are, that are of darkness in your life, the things that are, don't need to be there, the things that are, that are just, they're, they're not God's best for you. Maybe it's, you know, it's things of the senses that you've kind of indulged in. And, and you're saying, well, how do I get to God's best for me? You have to kind of get through that. That's what Ephesians is saying. You have to expose that. Put light on that. Say, you know what, God, if this is not your best for me, then I'm willing to let that go. If, if, if this relationship is not the best for me, I'm willing to change it, do what I need to do. If, you know, or, or how, you know, behaviors that I'm doing, whatever habits that I've got. And so Ephesians is saying, you want God's best for you? You want to know God's will for you? You got to be willing to push through this stuff. You got to be willing to expose that and say, God, I need your help. I certainly want to grow. So I want to just lead you to three, three questions. I think that if you, if, you're, if you say, you know what, I do want God's will. I do want God's vision for my life. You need to answer three questions. This will really lead you a long way in discovering God's purpose for your life. Number one, what am I doing that I should not be doing? What am I doing? Because most of us are doing stuff in our lives that really we shouldn't be doing. And, and, and listen, it's not necessarily sinful. Not everything that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing is like, hey, that's wrong. That's why I love this verse here. He talks about that here. He says, you say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. Would you agree with that? I mean, you, you, maybe, hey, I can do that. Well, yeah, but is it good for you? Well, no, but I can do it. You say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. So this is a level of spiritual maturity where you say, you know, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And, and, and so, and, and when you're saying, what, what is, what's God's will for my life? Well, then I need to be willing to make the things that are the best choices, the best choices for me. Here, he says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then, so what happens? I stopped it right there on purpose. <laughs> you know, in other words, if I... If I, if I am willing to transform my mind, if I'm willing to say, okay, I'm going to give up that stuff that's not beneficial, it's not helpful for me, what is the result? What's the, what, what, what do I get out of it? What's the benefit? Well, he says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. You want to know what God's will for your life is, his vision for your life, and his good, pleasing, and perfect will. He goes, you got to be willing to get through some of that stuff. You got to be willing to say, hey, I, I part with some things that are getting in the way. And you say, what am I, you know, what am I doing that I shouldn't be doing? What, what am I doing that is just not helping me, you know, at all? Proverbs chapter 4 says, let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. So here he, again, he's saying, hey, you want God's best for you. You got to be willing to, to, to say, I'm going to walk the straight and narrow as the saying goes, right? Next, what am I not doing that I should be doing? So that's kind of the opposite question, right? What, what am I not doing? I need to be doing that, and, uh, but, I'm, but, uh, but I'm not. And, and sometimes, you know, that, that's, that's where the church can intersect in your life. Where we, we want to, part of what we do with growth track is we say, here's some things that you can do that you, with your gifts, your skill sets, your interests, your shape, the way God's designed you, 
your desire, all that stuff. How can you make an eternal impact? Because a lot of us, we tend to use the gifts and the things that we have for ourselves or maybe for people like in our immediate families. But God wants us to be a blessing to the world. He gives us more than we need. That's not just finances. He gives us more than we need so we have something to share. We have something to give to others. And that is, certainly that includes finances, right? God gives us more than we need financially so that we can be a benefit. We can be a blessing. We don't have to hoard everything. And I, I like financial because we all get that. Okay, yeah, I have more money than I really need. I, I, you can always spend it. I'm not saying you can't figure out a way to spend it and take a, a better vacation and do something with it. But I'm saying God gives us more than we need so that we have something we can bless others with. But that's true in the way God's wired you and the gifts and the things that he's given you, some of your time and your abilities. You could spend it all on your time. You could just work, 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 and you come home, you're just blitzed and you're just tired and, you, ah, and that's it. And then you just, you have nothing to give. Or you can say, you know what? I need to make sure and prioritize so that what am I not doing that I should be doing? Because God wants me to be a blessing. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, well, he says he sins. He goes, it's wrong for you. And what he's saying is, is and I like this because he's saying, hey, you don't need uh, Andy to tell you what's, 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 what you're not doing that you shouldn't be doing. You don't need a holy Andy. You have a Holy Spirit. <laughs> you, know, you don't need me. God says, it's between you and him. And that's part of what I try to do is I'm always trying to push you to, you to talk to God about your life. I don't want to get in the way because then you'll just be upset at me. You know, it's not about me. I don't only, you go before God. You do what God's asking you to do. That's what's all important. And so that's, so what I want to invite you to do is, of course, in our, in our series here, it's in our series that's going along with our small group, is we are ending with Serve Day. Serve Day is something where we're just saying, hey, let's do this together. Now, it's inconvenient. July, I think it's July 13th, right? July 13th, you probably have something to do. You know, there's always things to do on a Saturday morning. It's from 9 to, 9 to 12. But I'm going to ask you, if you can, if you're out of town or something, I get it. But, but if you can, I'm asking you, serve the community with us. This is a way for us to, to once a year where we serve the community. It's not about our church. Now, we do it in other ways, of course. But this is something, a rally call. And so I'm asking you, hey, why don't you consider doing this? And uh, we had a great time last year. It was our first time last year. But that's what I'd like you to do is serve day. So if you, if you can, pull out your phone. You can do that now. Pull out your phone. You can just, just pretend if you don't want to. Pull out your phone. And as an app, there's an app called Serve Day. You just type in your app and if you're looking for it. And you'll see this picture come up in, 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 all, the fo in all the phone uh, uh, formats. And it'll, say, it'll look like that, big red, says, and download that, and then type in Vineyard Community Church. And, and, uh, and we're actually joining hundreds of other churches on that very same day, that same morning, serving their communities. So you, that's why you have to type in Vineyard, because there's other churches in there. But we're excited about doing it. We think it's a great way to serve our community. And it's just one way. It's not the, it's not the only way. You know, there's, certainly there's other ways to serve, but that's, that's a big part of it. It says, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. So when we're talking about, uh, you know, God's vision for our lives, he says, don't get all caught up and worrying about tomorrow and how you're, he says, you know, because sometimes we, we get so focused either on the past we, or, or, the, or the future and we miss what's going on today. And so God says, hey, I want you to be involved right now, right here in what I'm doing in your life, okay? And then number three, why not do it today? Why not do it today? There's a tendency for us to, to listen to something about, oh, you know, this area where uh, uh, thinking about your future, thinking about God's vision for your life. And we just kind of, well, maybe later. That's a good idea. I'm just busy right now. <laughs> I don't have time. So, so doing it today, I, why not do it today? That's really, if you can answer that question, because the answer is there is no reason. Today is the day to do it. It says, for God still has ordained a day for us to enter into, into called today. Today. Psalm 139 says that God has ordered your steps, that He has defined 
uh, your life and you are in his book. And you go, you know, well, yeah, Andy, I'm not sure if his book, you know, I have some extra chapters I wrote that, are, that I don't think is God's will. You know what? I think all of us do. I have chapters I wrote in God's book that, 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 uh, that he didn't write, I wrote. But the good thing is, is God always gets to put in the last chapter. The last chapter always fits. And so God orders our steps. He's the one who is, 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 is making things come together for our lives. And, uh, and he says, don't procrastinate. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. So instead of procrastinating, you know, because sometimes we, you know, we're procrastinators. Are any of you procrastinators? Let me see. See, some of you are, you're, you're procrastinating. You'll say, I'll raise my hand in a second. You know, <laughs> you're, you're another level of procrastination. And so we need, to, we need to say, you know, today's the day. That's a, that's, so those are the three questions. What, what am I not doing that I should be doing? What am I doing that I shouldn't be doing? And why not today? Why not do it right now? So let's go to God in prayer, and um, we'll, 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 we'll ask those questions. Well, Lord, I just um, invite you right now, Lord, to come in this moment as we begin this new series about discovering your purpose for our life, what we're supposed to do with our life. And, um, you know, Lord, I know that there's some here that uh, maybe they don't feel very close to you. They need to, to come and, and come to you. And I, I'm so thankful that it, it, you don't, we don't have to go through other people to discover what your best intentions are for us. And we're all in this together. If you are far from God, God's calling you home today. Just saying, hey, why not today? Why not today? Some of you might need to rededicate your life. You're saying, man, I've, I've drifted. It's not been that important, this thing of this, you know, God's dream and his vision for me. But maybe you're like the, the proverb, when the, in Proverbs when it said that without vision you're perishing, that you die. Maybe, maybe you feel like that, that your life has, doesn't have a lot of value. You don't have a reason to live. That you're just existing. Maybe you said that exact word. Well, I don't even know why I'm, I'm just kind of going through the motions. Just paying bills, going to work. And yet God has a vision for you, a dream, a revelation. He has something great for you. And so tonight I'm going to invite you just to kind of pray right where you're at, okay? Just kind of go to God and I'm going to invite you to just, because his vision for you is behind that stuff that's getting in the way. So you got to deal with it. You got to go, God, help me to kind of clear the rubble, the debris, the stuff that's getting in the way. It's not the best for me. Maybe it's stuff you're doing that you shouldn't be doing. So you go, well, how do I deal with that? Well, the Bible says it's real clear. There's what, when you realize there's stuff that is in your life that's not helpful, that's not good, that's getting in the way of God's best for you, the Bible's very clear that you go to God, and, it, and it's called repentance, where you go to say, God, forgive me and help me. Give me the power to walk away from that, to live the kind of life that you have for me. Okay? So if that's you, then I'm going to invite you to just pray that prayer of repentance right now. Right where you're at. Just in your heart. I'm just going to just say something like this. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ for me. That he died on the cross for my sins. And some of those sins, they're forgiven, but they're still in my life. And I need that stuff cleared out. So would you say, God, give me, help me, Lord, to clear that stuff out. Illuminate it. That's an important part. Remember in Ephesians, it says, out of the darkness. He says, bring, invite God's light on that. Say, God, illuminate that. I don't want to live in the darkness. I don't want to be like that guy who shot and was super successful, but he just hit the wrong target. 
You say, God, help me to hit the right target. Your vision, your dream for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.